Hello everyone, I'm here today talking with Shaney Matthews, owner of My Happy Path. You can find Shaney at www.myhappypath.com. Shaney's been uh, practicing conscious happiness for the past 20 years. Um, she started the website to participate in activating global happiness. That's a pretty good pastime. <laughs> um, so welcome Shaney, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for having us, great to be here. Wonderful. Um, Today's topic is, is might seem a little bit strange. Uh, we both have websites that deal with happiness and keeping people happy and, and all that sort of stuff. And we're going to talk about grief and hardship <laughs> today, um, which aren't really funny subjects, but some people might think it's strange to go down that road. So um, I want to, we can just jump right in, Shaney. And my first question is what does happiness mean in times of difficulty and, and grief? Well, Goodness. You know, grief and hardship, that's definitely a part of life, I think, for every single human being. We all face it in our own ways, and life isn't a pure happiness road. It's one of challenges and hardship and grief. And in my life so far, I've unfortunately lost a lot of very close friends, and I've dealt with a lot of grief. And one thing that has over and over again is that happiness is a chosen path. It doesn't happen. And even in these times of grief, we need to keep moving towards practicing these tools of happiness, per se. Yeah, that, you, you said happiness is a conscious choice, and, and that, that's so incredibly important to remember. Um, it, even when you're feeling that depth of the sadness that occurs with hardship and grief. It's, it's good to feel those feelings of sadness, understand where they're coming from, but it still incorporates these tools of happiness. Sure. Too. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think sometimes when people think about happiness or self-improvement or human potential movement or sort of whatever you want to call it, that they, they sometimes think that there shouldn't be room for grief or for sadness or for difficulty and that kind of stuff but obviously there is we all have some um, and I think not trying to reject those feelings as you said but just accepting them and knowing that that's part of life and and that you can have both experiences you know I, I think is important to remember and, and with these challenges difficulties uh, the grief of losing a loved one, mm -hmm. they all, in my opinion, come into our, our lives to teach us huge lessons. They occur for a reason, and it's understanding why those reasons are ha happening and how they're helping us progress to become better people to sure. connect with who our highest potential is. Yeah, right, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we, we actually talked about consciously choosing your thoughts at a time like this, and I just wonder um, if you could speak a little bit about it, when you're sort of in the moment of maybe that really deep grief or sadness and, and that kind of thing, how, do, how can people better stay conscious during those times? You know, how can they consciously choose you know, the thoughts that they're having? Well, I think it's a conscious decision every day. Um, Interestingly, um, this winter, um, I was living in Argentina for the last five years, and um, in that time period, we lost some very important people in my life, but I didn't really necessarily take the time to grieve. I just tried to push it away. Mm. And then when um, we moved to back home to the United States, and we found a place that we finally, I felt safe my body decided it was time to grieve. There was nothing I could do about it. My heart hurt so much, mm. and it hurt so much that it actually affected my back, and I couldn't move. Oh, boy. I was stuck in bed, wow. <laughs> and I'm an active person, so for me that was really difficult. Mm. And it really put me to the test of what I've been preaching, per se. <laughs> right. And I really had to go back to, for me, the tools that really connect for me are yoga, meditation, 
um, speaking with other people that are on a positive path, yeah. and also connecting with a greater source. I, for me, I call it the universe, other people, God, whatever you want to call it, connecting that there's a bigger. And so during this time of uh, grief that I was going through, it was that practice of continually um, using meditation, yoga, yeah. happiness, uh, people that are positive, but also gifts of love to myself, such as massage, um, asking my husband for a foot massage, <laughs> uh, doing things that are kind for me, yeah. and giving love to myself. Yeah, and that's great. It, the The point you make about not rejecting the feelings, I think, is really important. Um, and just, right, the feelings are what they are, and, and they're there for a very good reason. Uh, you know, it would be ridiculous to, you know, be blissful every moment of every day in every situation. Um, and like you said, when we, yeah, exactly. You, you put, not right. <laughs> How do you truthful about what life is trying yeah. to provide in challenges and lessons for you, I think, if you... Right, right. And I agree with you. I don't think you can ever really run away from that. It'll catch up to you in some form or another. So, yeah, I can see that. Um, so, okay, we just blipped away for a sec, but I think we're back now, so, yeah, we'll do some creative editing. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I guess the last point that I just wanted to discuss with you a little bit is, is the fact that there, there must be room for both. Um, we're, we're going to be blissfully joyful sometimes and very, very sad sometimes, um, and I guess we've talked a little bit about grief, but also just the hardship kind of stuff. Maybe it isn't a particularly sad situation as in the death of a loved one or something, but loss of a job or, you know, something that is life changing. Um, and just wanted to sort of have you talk a little bit once again, just about how both of those things exist in our lives. Most definitely. I think that this doesn't pertain only to just grief, but hardship when you, or when things seem so overwhelming and out of control that you just feel that you need to connect. Yeah. These tools for happiness help us to connect with a calmness and a higher knowing, I guess, maybe, mm -hmm. that it's going to be okay. Right. Uh, I, I don't believe that life can truly exist unless happiness hardship are interlaced in life. It, they're one, one and the same. The, right. There is no negative and positive. It is all for one to create love. So we all understand each other. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. No, I think it does, right. You, you can't ever only have one side of a coin. Right? The, the <laughs> yeah. coin is two-sided. So, yeah, yeah. And right, sometimes one's going to present itself and sometimes the other. But I, I, yeah, I... It's just very important, I think, to remember um, to accept the feelings. Know, like you said, that they're going to come, and pushing them away works for a little while, maybe, <laughs> but won't work Not for so too long. Just trusting that they're all—it's all for a reason. Yeah. Um, a quick story: uh, When I lived in Argentina, I moved there thinking I was going to be doing all these amazing things mm -hmm. and we came into a situation that was dangerous and I had to move yeah. and so all these hopes and dreams that I had were dashed I thought but what turned out to be and it, it felt to me a very big hardship my whole life was changing this is mm -hmm. not what I planned right and in the end it turned out all great because I moved to another place where I was actually able to um, connect with some nonprofits I would have never been able to meet prior. And it was just a really great example that everything truly happens for a reason. We don't understand why. And what may seem so hard, I remember crying for hours over having to leave right. this part of my life. And in the end, it was all good. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Right. And that's absolutely the truth. There's a lesson to be learned in everything. And I think, sort of, 
the reason to do this kind of study, the reason to be conscious of, of how you feel and how you think the way that you have been for so long gives you that ability to be inside that hardship but know, like you said, that you're going to come out the other end and, and probably smarter for it. So. And we all, we all have that. It's, you know, we're all, we all have a path of a higher potential. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Shani, it's been wonderful talking to you. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thank you so much, Gordon. It's been such a pleasure. I appreciate it. Remember, everyone, to visit uh, Shani at myhappypath.com. She has wonderful stuff on the site, lots of great photography and meditations, and you can sign up for Shani's uh, email and join the site and participate and, and have a whole lot of fun there. Activate happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Shaney, thanks again so much. Thank you.